So it's been a couple of days. Yesterday I went out and did some headshots for my aunt, who is a new writer, has a book coming out. We'll chat about that later. Uh, yeah, just kind of sorting up some things. Um, obviously I'm not in the bus anymore. Today I saw some pictures Brian was posting in the bus, doing some work on the uh, cruise control, which I never turned on. <laughs> And I uh, was like, man, I miss traveling around. Um, so I wanted to finally let you guys know the direction I'm heading. And if anybody can guess right now, throw it in the comments. But the reason for getting out of my bus is because it was so darn expensive for the diesel. So I have another idea of a way to make getting around the country a lot cheaper. Um, for anyone who's a business type person, cash flow. I was having negative cash flow basically the whole time except for the Virgin Mobile part, which was just the first six months. But after that, over a year, uh, just negative cash flow, which for any business is, is not good. And I look at my channel as a business because it I'm trying to have it you know, it's basically my full-time job as far as my activities during the day. And I would love to get to the point where it can just sustain it itself and, and just make movies and videos nonstop. That would be amazing. So I'm over here at my buddy's place and we're going to get a tour of his rig because he has a great way to operate a bus with very, very little costs. So if anybody has a a guess of what I'm thinking about doing with a full-size bus with a diesel engine. Hint, hint, throw it in the comments because we're going to go for a tour right now. All right, so if you guys saw my video back in October at the Tiny House Festival, you guys met Kyle before. Kyle uh, is a bus converter by trade and the proud owner of the giant zombie apocalypse bus, which is really dope. <laughs> so we're going to get a quick uh, explanation of a vegetable oil. Um, and you've been running veggie now for like 10 years? Yep, pretty much. That's awesome. All right, so yeah. what, 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 do you, what do we got here? So the system is uh, it's a basic uh, two-tank system. Um, I've got an auxiliary uh, veg fuel tank underneath the bus, and it has a coolant heat exchanger in it. So I start up on diesel, that engine coolant warms the, the, the veg tank, and once you get up to operating temp, you can basically flip the switch over, and the selector valve goes and starts pulling fuel from the other, the veg, the veg side of the system. So it, it, brings, um, it brings veg fuel up to the engine compartment in a bundle that's all taped together with the coolant line so it stays hot. Um, it comes up here and it goes through this uh, Raycor 900 series uh, diesel water separator. It's got a mic uh, 10 micron filter down in there and uh, so that that gets all of the small particulates out of the, the veg and then it gets run through uh, another coolant pad heater that's right back there tucked away behind it. Um, just to make sure that it's extra hot before it gets sent right into the injection pump. So um, it's a pretty basic system, but um, it you know it does really well um, on this engine, especially. It's very simple to work on, and um, yeah, that's basically it in a nutshell. <laughs> All right, and where's the injection pump? Uh, the Can injection we see it from pump here? is on the other side. On actually. the other side? Yeah. Okay. In line. Let's. I want to see all the components. Um, so, so after that, after that, it goes through that filter and that pad heater. Then it brings it over here, and it goes into this lift pump right here, which is what puts it into this beefy uh, inline injection pump, and that's what sends all the fuel off into the cylinder heads awesome so yeah and this over on this side you can see um, this right here is my sight glass so this actually will show you gives you a you know a, a, a view of what 
exactly is going through your fuel line. So if you have any issues, you can see exactly what the engine's burning, you know. Mm -hmm. But you use that to time the uh, you use that to time the return system. So um, you once you have an idea of how long it takes for a certain piece of fuel to get through your entire engine, you can see that you can tell exactly how long it does take by looking through that sight glass, because that sight glass is actually on the re on the return side of things. Mm -hmm. So you use that to adjust the timing for the selector valve on the return side because, you know, with a diesel engine, not all of the fuel gets burnt. So it has to send the right fuel back to the right tank, you know. This is the, the send line for the fuel, the veg fuel. Yep. It comes up here and it goes into this. This is the, the selector solenoid valve okay. that goes between diesel. I've got my diesel line here. And my veg line here. Okay, so you so, have, so you have an electronic switch. Yep. Okay. So that's just a manual switch on the inside. As soon as I'm up to temperature, I flip that switch, and this goes from bringing diesel into the fuel, the main fuel line, which is on the other side here. Yep. To bring a veg in. Okay. Sweet. But then back here behind the injection pump, I've got a little purge valve. It's just a little Schrader valve that you can push down, um, and that helps you to, like, when you're priming your system, getting any air bubbles out of the lines. Or if you have any uh, mishaps where you like forget to tighten a filter down, or you introduce air into the system in any way, run out of gas. You, yeah, you run out of gas. Exactly. You can you can purge the air out of the fuel line with that little thing, and it's super handy. So with this system, with the DT four sixty six, the way that the fuel filter housing is built, um, it took a little bit more uh, bypassing to get because you don't want to put the veg fuel through the diesel fuel filter. Right. Um, you, want to, you want to keep the fuel filters separate. So this, this exact engine had a, had a diesel fuel filter uh, housing that was a little bit, it was a little bit more built in. So I had to, um, that was like really the only thing that took a little bit of brain power is just to, to sort of just schematic out on a piece of paper how that was going to get bypassed and it just it was just a series of you know getting a couple extra pieces of fuel line and some extra you know plumbing fittings to create a bypass for that but um that was really the only thing that that w was a little bit of a head scratcher on this one just because um of the way that it was the filter housing was built but it's a very simple system it's just you know separating these two fuel lines these two fuel systems and uh, having a switch that goes between the two. And the whole system's based on heat, you know? So that's mm -hmm. why it goes through the, this series of heaters, keeps everything nice and warm because that's how you lower the viscosity of the, the veg fuel is by heating it up. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like biodiesel is, is veg oil that is run through a chemical process to make it less viscous. Mm -hmm and enable it to be run in to a, make it thinner and yeah, yeah all that stuff and cool. to be run in an engine without modification mm -hmm. you know whereas the straight veg system is based on heat and w estimate a cost that I'm looking uh, you know towards uh, I mean, to convert it this is a, all stuff that you can do yourself I mean it's stuff that you can put together at the hardware store and um, you know I think one of the most complicated things about it is just getting the the wiring set up for the solenoid valves for the selector valves uh, the return and the supply valves and um, you know I went through us I, I went through a, a company down in Corvallis called in biofuel and they they basically what they do is put everything together for you and give you a manual it's like an installation manual so you can just follow the steps with these schematics and that was most handy for the wiring side of things um, as far as like everything else it's all like really basic stuff that you can put together yourself but it was nice to have a a wiring manual to like you know follow through and and stuff like that but as far as price wise I mean it just depends on how much you want to do yourself you know I'd say probably somewhere like you know with the price of a tank um, if you're doing an interior tank that you can just use a repurposed like old diesel tank or if you're going to do a custom tank that's going to be mounted underneath the bus somewhere, that's going to cost you more money. But 
you know, for a couple grand, you could have this whole system, which includes, uh, you know, a, a refuel kit, which is like an onboard filtration system. You can pull veg Pump from. where you can take it out of the mm -hmm. bins. Yep, exactly. You can pull it from, you know, uh, waste uh, bins behind restaurants. And uh, probably, like, you know, spending a couple grand gets you that entire system, you know. So look at it as an investment that's going to pay itself off within, it's, you know, a couple thousand miles of driving, we, really. Yeah, and, and for me, uh, well, especially for this bus, uh, we get about, what, 10 miles per gallon. So yep. depending on the capacity of the tank, you're probably looking at maybe 15 Phillips at the price of diesel right now, which would pay for the whole system. And then at that point on, you're saving money pretty much. Right. So, uh, can we look at the oil tank in the back? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, this this is actually the tank down here. Okay. Uh, it was a custom welded aluminum tank that I actually had to move a couple of things out of the way. This uh, this compressed air tank right here for the brake lines. Um, I had to move that forward. I had to move my air dryer forward a little bit to free up this space right here. Um, so it took a little bit of just monkeying around down there, but um, this thing holds about 120 gallons of veg fuel. And I've got the heater lines coming in through the top of it, and they drop down in through the top of the tank. So the like, little stick, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I also have a, um, like a fuel sender, so I've got, a, I've got a regular old fuel gauge for my veg tank, which is super handy, so there's cool. no guesswork. So you know how much you have. Yeah. And then you have some uh, extra on the back. Is, yep. that, is that? <laughs> back here on my on my rack, I've got two auxiliary storage barrels, 55 gallon barrels, and um, and this is actually my veg pump right here. Oh, sick. So that's that's the refuel kit from Biofuel. Okay. Um, so they sell this whole. Yep. They pump this sucker thing, thing huh? They put this whole thing together for Is that you. another Raycore filter or uh, just some Micron uh, filter? That's a GPI, like, uh, standard, like, biodiesel or diesel fuel transfer pump. And then it has hose on both sides of it. This is the the filter wand that you drop down into a, a dirty grease vat. Mm -hmm. And it has a, 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 a mesh, a stainless steel mesh filter on the end that part, you know filters out a certain amount of particulates and then the pump itself also has a strainer and then they put on another barrel filter down here um, that has another smaller strainer on it so that's like your main initial filtration system so as you're pulling that fuel out of that vat you're filtering it mm -hmm. of particulates so you get so it's essentially once it goes through this system here, it's it's clean it's, enough it's, to, it's to relatively throw the... clean, and it goes in the tank, and then it goes from the tank through that micron filter, which gets out the Raycor. This, yeah, the Raycor mm -hmm. through all the smallest particulates, and then it's ready to inject. Um, so this thing, it's it's a pump that works on a, a dual switch, a dual directional switch. So you get to a certain point where you're done um, filling up your tanks. And then you just backflow it in the other direction, and that blows out with the liquid that's in the line. It blows out the stuff that's caught in the filters. So you're basically cleaning out the pump every time you use it. That's or that's the filtration system. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, so I've got these two barrels back here at 110 gallons of capacity combined, and then I've got the 120 gallon tank back there. So you know I've got the ability to travel about 2,000 miles when I'm fully loaded with veg fuel at that's, time. So, that's so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. And then worst case scenario, you run out of uh, oil or uh, you can't find any oil and then your diesel system is still intact yep. and so you just put uh, diesel in the diesel tank. Right. Mm -hmm. The diesel system is fully intact at all times and then you can also, you could also put diesel in the veg side too if you wanted to because heating up the diesel is not going to cause any problems. I mean, it, it actually... The, fil the the heater system that you use for the veg is actually a diesel system. You know, it's for like keeping fuel temps up mm -hmm. um, in very cold climates. You know, and keeping the tanks from gelling and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you can always fill your veg side with diesel too if you wanted to. You know, so um, you have a lot of flexibility. And you're uh, not limited. 
That's awesome. So, yeah. Wow, look at this, guys. What do you think? Throw in the comments below. This is a, a similar kind of system that I want. Um, and like I said earlier, um, this is about correcting my cash flow. And if I can get my hands on oil, it's going to be a lot cheaper to drive around. And I'm sure tons of people who have restaurants or extra oil or uh, places where they don't collect it as much um, with the biodiesel manufacturers or, you know, I'm sure people are going to come out of the woodwork and offer me their oil because it's basically garbage uh, in the unfiltered state. And then, uh, so inside the bus you have a little oil setup in here. Could you explain that? Yeah, so this is the dashboard here and this um, this is the, the veg system. Uh, uh, control center kind of this is the fuel gauge for the tank um, and it just works like a normal diesel fuel uh, you know gauge level and these two switches control um, this one on the left is the pad heater that is on the Raycor uh, micron filter and so when you start up the bus I basically just flip flip on that switch and that uh, keeps the that heats up the oil that's actually in the 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 filter housing of that micron filter so it just keeps everything up at the same temperature so that when you get up to temp you flip this switch on the right here and that is actually the control to uh, flip the the intake uh, um, the oil right? yeah exactly mm -hmm. the um, so it switches for that switches like down is diesel and up is oil or something. Up is oil, exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that 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 is like the uh, selector for the intake. So you flip it up and then you're running veg. And um, I actually wired in a uh, a veg oil uh, temperature uh, reader over here, and uh, but I have found that that is pretty much completely unnecessary because um, I found that as long as the coolant is up to temperature, which you have a water temperature gauge on your dash, and as long as the coolant is up at temp, it just does its job. So it, it doesn't warrant like actually um, um, like viewing the oil temperature or like trying to like maintain the oil temperature via a temp gauge because you're basically your 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 engine temp gauge is what's telling you what you need to know. Right, gotcha. So. And then how long does it take to start up the bus and then switch it over to oil? Uh, it depends on um, how much you're driving. I mean, so like if you were to just start the bus and let it idle, obviously it's going to take a lot longer to get up to. Basically, operating temperature for this bus is about is about one ninety, and that's like where you that's like where you flip the the selector valve um so you know you'll get there a lot faster if you drive you know mm -hmm. um i found that like in the dead of winter you know when the outside temperature is much colder it's you're not you're not going to get up to temp until you get on the highway and start driving you know so it's like it takes a little bit longer to warm up the engine when it's cold outside but um, it really just depends on like how what the outside temperature is and how much you're actually driving. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's just you know pretty pretty much pretty straightforward. You know, as far as uh, the engine temp is concerned, um, just as soon as your engine gets hot, then then you're switching over to veg because that means your veg is hot as well. All right now we're gonna get a brief tour. Um, of Kyle's bus. By the way, Kyle is a bus builder, and if somebody wants a custom bus or an ambulance like the one in the back, which you haven't guys seen yet, where can everybody find you and hire you? Uh, you can visit my website, kylevolkman.com. V O L K M A N. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, so this is the interior of the bus. I've got uh, actually got a roof raise in here, and that's what gives it the interior headroom space. Um, we were talking earlier about the benefits of that. I did it so that I could insulate to the maximum degree on the floor because this is something that I live in full time in cold winter months. So roof raise was an expensive part of the bus conversion, but it was definitely worth it in my opinion. Um, but it is a, it is a it is the single largest chunk that you will that you will put forth. That's crazy um, to think about. Yeah, but that's what gives it the space, you know, like this cabinet. 
you know, is like sort of up above my head because of that. If it wasn't raised, you know, it would be a lot lower, you know. So, um, got my little bedroom back here with some closet space, um, shelving, you know, whatnot. Down below here is, uh, uh, this step folds up and it's a, it's like a access door. That's my main storage area is underneath the bed. Uh, my little bathroom here, I've got a, a composting, dry composting toilet, super efficient, and it doesn't use any water for your flushing, so you're conserving water in that way. Um, this is a tiny wood stove brand, dwarf four kilowatt uh, uh, wood burner, <laughs> super efficient. Um, check those guys out, they've got great products, and uh, they're based in Idaho, actually. Um, met, met, uh, Nick at the Portland, uh, tiny house festival mm, that mm -hmm. we, that we actually met at. Yep. Um, I'm super, super happy with this product. It's, it's very efficient. Puts out a lot of heat. You put chips in there or, uh, uh no, just pellets? I mean, you could, you can burn, you could burn that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not a pellet stove though. It's, it's just like a regular old wood stove. So it takes like 10 inch lengths of log. You can put in presto logs. I guess maybe coal too, if you wanted to go that route, but, um, Hey, they're yeah, bringing coal back. <laughs> works really good. Super happy about that. Um, yeah. And then this is just like the living space. I've got a little, you know, this is like the main table functions as the kitchen table and my desk space and everything like that. I've actually got, a, I inlaid a little map of, uh, the, the Pacific Northwest. Oh, it's nice. A, it's actually a hand drawn map from the forties that I got at a map store. And I put it underneath a glaze for the tabletop. That's super cool. But, um, yeah, all the storage underneath the benches, and uh, the couch pulls out into a bed. It has storage underneath and in the, in the back as well. And um, yeah, you know, basic kitchen, three-way fridge, water heater, cabinet space. Um, this is a propane cooktop and oven combo. Did you, did you get that out of an RV or? Yeah, this is like an RV grade. Um, it's an Atwood, Atwood brand. Mm -hmm. It's pretty common for um, RV applications, but um, it's super efficient. You know, it, it, you go months and months and months without draining a, a five gallon tank of propane. I, I so, bet. I bet. Um, yeah, it's really nice. That's super cool. Yeah. Well, dude, thanks for the tour. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for all the oil uh, info. Absolutely. I'm going to try and meet up with your buddy and pick his brain a bit too. Yeah. And also Kyle has a lead for me for buses, which is super cool too. It's not too far away. Um, what do you guys think? You like this layout? You like the oil bus idea? This is what I was kind of keeping, not really secret, but this is what I was thinking of to uh, to continue you know, the videos and the, the trip and stuff like that. So uh, what do you think? Let me know. Shut